Well guys, it is finally here. Milwaukee has officially released their M18 track saw. Just got it. And we're gonna go through the key features on this track saw. And I'm gonna talk about how it stacks up as compared to some of the other track saws on the market, such as Festool, Mafel. Milwaukee was basically the last tool company to come out with a track saw. They've had time to look at everybody else's key features. They've been able to learn from everybody else. And we're gonna see on this track saw if they've delivered on that extended period of time that they had to come up with a good saw. Let's start off talking about overall power and battery usage. That's one of the biggest questions we have when purchasing a cordless track saw is, is it gonna have enough power to get through the materials that I need to cut? And how fast is it gonna use up batteries as I use it? Now, first, let me hit on the topic of overall power. I tested the new M18 on a variety of different applications that I typically use. Uh, ripping plywood, ripping one by material, beveling one by material, so you're going with a deeper cut, and then straight line ripping thick hardwoods. I even tested it on some inch and a half thick white oak. Let me tell you, I was extremely, extremely impressed with the power output on this saw. I am using it with a 6.0 high output battery. That is the battery that you will get with the saw if you purchase the kit. I think that's gonna be a key factor in getting the most power out of this saw. I've been using this Festool TSC 55 for quite a few years now, and it has dual batteries on it. And I felt like the Milwaukee had just as enough just as much power, if not more power, than the Festool. I was extremely surprised, even whenever I really pushed the Milwaukee through the material much faster than I would actually use it in the field, but just to see what it took to bog it down, it really just kept on going. I was very impressed. One of the things about the Festool is, whenever you push it a little too hard, it'll actually stop the blade and you have to pull back and then restart the saw. Didn't have that at all with the Milwaukee. It just kept right on going through. Very impressed with the overall power on the saw. The next factor to look at is how long are the batteries gonna last on this saw doing general work. The testing that I did, I got about what I expected out of these battery packs, the 6.0 high output packs. In the past on the job site, I've tried to do large beam jobs whenever I'm ripping uh, a few hundred feet of bevels onto one by material for beams in a single day using a cordless track saw, mainly this TSC 55 that has the dual batteries. It can be done, but you're constantly having to change out batteries uh, and just kind of keep them on the charger. It's a little bit of a nuisance. So I am gonna say that still, if you're doing a really high amount of ripping, um, you are gonna be changing out batteries pretty frequently. Not ridiculously frequently, but it, it's gonna use them up, especially if it's a demanding task. But um, I think you're gonna get a very reasonable amount of work out of one of these high output 6.0 batteries. I'm not disappointed at all with how much usage I got out of this battery pack. I think maybe the single biggest selling factor for this saw isn't the saw itself, it's the battery platform. Many of us are already using the M18 Milwaukee batteries on other tools and being able to have our track saw use the same battery platform is a huge plus. It's a huge pain in the neck whenever you have to carry special chargers for a tool uh, brand that you only have one tool of. Um, huge advantage to be able to have a nice quality track saw using M18 batteries. So in this overall category of overall power and battery usage, I'm gonna give this a 4.5 stars out of five. I'm very, very impressed and pleased with the overall power. Uh, love the fact that it's on the M18 platform. Only downside is if you're doing really demanding tasks, I do think you will go battery through batteries fairly quickly, but if you're doing lighter work, remodeling where it's not too demanding, I think you're gonna be just fine and happy with the overall battery usage. One of the most important questions to answer whenever you purchase a cordless track saw is what tracks do you already have? Are you gonna be purchasing new tracks and what brand are you gonna buy? 
for a lot of us who have been in the industry already for years, we've used maybe corded track saws and already have some of our own tracks that we don't really want to buy different tracks and we need to know, will this saw work with the tracks that we have? So I have been using Festool tracks my whole career. That's all I own. I can tell you that as far as I can tell, this saw works perfectly with Festool tracks. When you pull your track saw out of the box, whenever you purchase it new, it does not have any calibration done or anything like that, but you'll notice that you can pretty well plop it down on a Festool track and it will work. Now, I would say that the design of the track system on this saw is up to par with Festool or Mafel. It's very good in my opinion. You'll notice on the side of the track saw, there are these knobs here, and that is going to allow you to adjust your tightness to your track right here. So this is a very simple cam action design. You'll notice that as I turn this, it's going to loosen or tighten this piece right here um, so that you don't get slop in your track whenever you use it. So it's very easy to calibrate that to the tightness uh, that you need for your track. You will notice on all of these different track saws, they've got that same basic design, simple uh, knob here that you turn that is going to adjust that cam under the saw and loosen or tighten these guides here. Again, very nice design on the new Milwaukee. The other thing is um, you can actually calibrate your different tracks, uh, your different track saws to the track so that they're all cutting exactly the same. And you do have some adjustment here on this guide so that if this saw isn't quite matching up with another saw, you can get them dialed in perfectly with these set screws here. One thing that you need to watch out for with using different tracks from different brands with different brands of actual saws is that whenever you tilt the saw over on a bevel, some tracks will not line up in the same way with your splinter guard. So that was one of the first things I was curious about with the new Milwaukee saw is if I make a straight cut 90 degrees, leave the track exactly where it is, and then tilt the saw over to 45 degrees, where my blade comes through should intersect with the bottom of my splinter guard on the saw, and basically at the very top point of the exact cut that I just made at 90 degrees. Whenever I purchased my Mafel saw and tried to use it with the Festool tracks, it didn't line up at all whenever I would use, the, use it on a bevel. Now, right out of the box, the Milwaukee is very close but it does need a little bit of adjustment, I feel, and that is where the ability to move these pieces on the underside of the track really comes in handy. I think that if I bump these out just a hair, that will be perfect, but let me show you what this looks like as is. You'll notice here I made a cut halfway through at a 45 degree bevel. I made my first cut through at 90 degrees straight up and down, and I didn't move my track. So as we come all the way up here, you'll notice that right at this point is where my straight cut and my bevel cut meet. Now what we want is for that edge right there on that cut to be exactly in line, but as you'll see, the bevel cut is actually over uh, back this way, just a hair, probably a 32nd or so. So it's very close to working perfectly together um, with the bevel and straight cuts, but not quite perfect. So again, if you're not following exactly what I'm saying, the reason that is important is because we want to be able to make a pencil line on our work material and drop the edge of our splinter guard directly down onto our pencil line and have that be our exact cut line when we actually cut with the saw. It makes it a little bit difficult if you have a little bit of variation 
whenever you're using your bevel feature. Not a deal breaker, not the end of the world, but it's just something to be aware of. So for my overall rating on the track system, Milwaukee did a great job designing the underside of this saw um, to make it adjustable, work very precisely. You can take all the slop out and get it dialed in just right. You can calibrate this saw with your other saws so that they all cut from the exact same spot with your tracks. And I'm really glad it works with the Festool track system. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of five, taking half a star off just simply because out of the box, this doesn't quite line up perfectly whenever you cut it 90 degrees and 45 degrees with a Festool track. Granted, that's not a problem for them. Maybe it's perfect with their Milwaukee tracks, but it's just something that I'll have to tweak a little bit to make it work for me. Let's talk about cut capacity. With the M18 saw, you have two and a quarter inches of depth. Now, the Festool TSC55 is rated for, at the bevel, this is maybe an important technical uh, cut capacity that might matter to you. The old uh, TS saws were only gonna go an inch and seven sixteenths deep at a 45 degree bevel. That might be a problem if you're trying to rip through framing material, which is an inch and a half deep at a 45 degree bevel because the Milwaukee's blade is six and a half inches instead of six and a quarter, it will be able to rip through framing material at a 45 degree bevel. In the literature from Milwaukee, I haven't been able to find their exact published specification on what that bevel depth is, but I think it's somewhere around an inch and three quarters, at least an inch and five eighths, I think, based on what I can tell. But it will go through framing material at a bevel, but it is close. A little more about the blade aspect of the saw. You have a depth adjustment right here. This is very easy to slide up and down so that you can see what your blade depth is. Uh, up here, this is with the track. Down here on this one, it's without the track. So you can see both of those depth measurements, whether you're reading it here or up here. Very easy to just push this button and it slides up and down and locks into place nicely. You also have a micro adjustment up here where you can really fine tune your depth by turning this knob uh, to get that exactly where you want it so that if you're locked on here to a half inch, it's exactly a half inch. I would say that these features with depth adjustment are on par with the Festool or Maffel saws, very refined features that work nicely. Let's cover blade changes real quick. It took me a while to find this little Allen wrench and I'm ashamed to say I actually had to look in the manual to figure out where it was at, but I was just looking right past it. It's right up here in the top of the handle. It tucks in there nicely, but you're gonna pull that out it's pretty tight uh, to get to change out your blade. Now you will notice on the inside of your handle, there's a little flip toggle here. You wanna flip that up to the lock button and you'll be able to push your saw down and the arbor will lock right in the center of this open area and you can use your wrench to take the blade out. Whenever you want to pop it back up, you'll simply flip it back to the unlock position, bump it down and it pops right back up into place. Works really nicely. Uh, I'm impressed with how they did that. The only thing that I wish they would have done, the blade will still spin so you do still have to push down on your arbor lock right here whenever you want to unscrew the bolt for that. Fun fact, whenever you use Festool's saw to change the blade, when it locks into place, the blade actually locks too, so you don't have to push down an arbor lock. But we can't have it all. I still think Milwaukee has done a really nice job, um, but that's just one little feature there. But anyways, very easy to change the blade. Nice little lever here, works really smoothly. I'm happy with that. My overall rating on the blade and cut capacity, again, 4.5 out of five. Uh, the only downside is with the 12, 20 millimeter arbor, might be a little tough to find the blades that you need, 
but the advantage is if you're like me and you've got a bunch of higher end expensive blades that you already purchased for Festool or Mafel track saws, they should be able to work just fine with the Milwaukee. They're just a quarter inch less in diameter, but they'll still work. So kind of a, a, a choice between the two it might be a win or a lose depending on your situation, but overall, no problems that I can see with the blade or capacity. I do want to add real quick that choosing the correct blade when using a cordless track saw is really important. Um, having the right thickness of the kerf and the number of teeth for the kind of cutting you're doing is crucial. I have found if you are cutting, uh, say, you're trying to straight line rip some thick hardwood and you've got too many teeth on the blade, it's going to bog down the saw. Um, maybe a a blade that is too thick of a kerf also might bog down the saw. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're choosing the correct number of teeth for the kind of work that you're doing. Now we're on to size, weight, and storage. You can purchase this new track saw as the tool only, or you can purchase it in the kit that comes with the pack out, uh, the 6.0 high output battery uh, and charger. So it's a nice kit here. As you can see, I've got it in the pack out that it comes with. It is a decent size uh, system just for a track saw. It's a pretty big box, but obviously Milwaukee is using the pack out system, which is a larger footprint. They don't really have a smaller box that they could fit it in uh, even if they wanted to. So you do get a pretty decent amount of storage in here, although a lot of it does kind of feel like wasted space. As you can see, easy to grab the saw and get it in and out. The dust bag uh, tucks underneath the saw nicely and it is really easy to put into place. So plop the saw into place, no problem. You've also got two additional areas right here where you can store batteries. But when I'm talking about wasted space, um, you kind of need this space for the saw but a lot of this area over here is empty space or foam. So you may want to modify this box if you're going to keep the tracks all in it. I was a little disappointed because this is my existing setup. I have a Festool HKC55 and TSC55. I'm able to just barely get both of those in this box, but it does work. Um, I have to lock the TSC55 down but it just slides in there nicely. Unfortunately, with this saw, no matter what I did to try to get it in here, uh, I just couldn't make it fit. So I was a little disappointed about that because I don't want to carry around this large box. Overall, I'm still going to again give this area, this category on size, a 4.5 out of five stars because I do think it is a really nice size it's easy to grab a hold of and use. Uh, it's right on par with the size of other saws in its class, and um, it's smooth to use. Um, dinging this a half a star simply because of the size of the pack out, there is a lot of wasted space, but Milwaukee didn't really have any other options. If they were going to give you this tool in a pack out, this was the only size that this saw would fit in, and that just means that part of it over here is gonna have a little bit more open space. Okay, we're on to our next category. We're gonna shotgun through some of the more refined features of this saw, just giving you an overall idea of the build quality of this tool. The overall function of the battery is excellent. I love how easily it pops into place and it's easy to take on and off. I hate some of the other battery flat pat platforms it's hard to get the batteries on and off. This works really well. This is the fuel brushless motor and it is variable speed over here. Personally, I don't ever use the variable speed on track saws, but it is there if you need it. The plunge action is very smooth. It does have a safety button up top and you'll notice whenever you push the safety button moves this pin forward, which allows it to plunge. It's a very smooth operation um, pushing that button works really well, feels great in the hand. An extremely important feature is having a riving knife on the saw. That's gonna be very important in case your material pinches on a tool like this. You want to have that, it's pretty much a standard feature on track saws, but I wanted to note that. 
The saw does come with a splinter guard, which will keep the outside edge of your blade from splintering. If you want to use this, you can replace this piece here. Otherwise, there's a nice plastic piece that moves up and down here. And what that does, a lot of times you'll get sawdust flying out this direction. This helps keep the sawdust inside and just works overall a lot better with the dust collection. And it's easy to move up and down, but this can be replaced with the splinter guard if you want to do that. I've already mentioned the depth gauge and micro adjustment, but this also works really well. It's up on par with Mafel or Festool, in my opinion. Nothing wrong with it. It works really nicely, and you've got your micro adjustment up there also. Let's talk bevel ad adjustments and stops. So you've got a knob here on the front and the rear for adjusting your tilt over. That's really important to have those knobs on the front and the back because it locks it in a lot better. That's really important. Now let's talk about your stops for your bevel. Here we've got um, your indents. Let's just say this is gonna go to 45 degrees the way it is set right now. Uh, let's say I want to go to 22 and a half. We've got this little knob on the front here. You pull it out rotate it over till the pointer is pointing at 22 and a half. Now, whenever I bump it over, it's gonna stop right on 22 and a half. It's a really nice feature. Again, very refined, I like it. Now, if you're like me, uh, you go past 45 degrees whenever you do your bevels or your miter folding. I like to go to 45 and a half or 46 degrees, but it's only letting me go to 45. What do I need to do? This might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but there's a little push button right here. You push that forward and that is going to allow you to go to 48 degrees here. And you hear it as soon as I came back, that snapped back into place. So if I wanna use it again, I gotta push it forward again, um, but I can also go negative one degree as well. So that works really well, very easy. Again, if I wanna go past, I'm just gonna push that forward and it's gonna let me go past 45 degrees. Very smooth, easy to use, not difficult at all. In this category of refined features, I'm gonna give the new M18 track saw a whopping five stars out of five. I'm very impressed with the fit and finish of the saw. They've got all of the key features that I want to see on a track saw. They've integrated all the things that I've liked that I've had on other track saws into this and I don't see anything on this that I don't like. So five out of five, I'm very pleased with the fit and finish on all the features on this saw. Real quick, let's talk about dust collection. You've got two options. You can use your vacuum hose or you can use the included dust bag with the saw. The dust bag works well, goes right onto the end of the saw. Um, as I used it, it worked pretty much the same as with my Festool TSC 55 saw. So I wasn't disappointed. I will say you have to have realistic expectations with these saws. If you're cutting something um, uh, thick and using a low tooth count blade, it sends some pretty large pieces and this will tend to maybe want to plug up. Um, all the saws that I've had that use the dust bag tended to do that. So just be aware of that. Um, and then of course, what size hose port do we have on this? It's your standard inch and seven eighths hose port. So if you're used to using Festool hoses like I am, it pushes in there really nicely and it's not going to pop off easily. You've got some adjustability uh, on the direction you want your hose to come off of. It twists around nicely. So everything that I expect on dust collection, five stars out of five on dust collection. Price and overall value. Right now, this saw has just been released. Typically, tool manufacturers charge a little bit more and the price tends to come down over time. But right now, the bare tool is listed at $399. And then if you want to buy the kit with the saw, uh, the 6.0 high output battery and your pack out and charger, that's gonna run you $639 is the price that I'm seeing right now. Overall, I think that's pretty reasonable for what you get. I didn't want Milwaukee to release a cheap tool that was trying to cater to the DIY market. I wanted a professional 
caliber track saw and I think that's what they're giving us here. So sorry to those people who might you know, be weekend warriors and want a more affordable track saw. This is a professional tool. So it's, it, they just couldn't hit a super low price point with it. I'm glad they didn't try to. I think it's a good value overall, high quality tool, reasonable price. So with all that being said, price to value ratio, I'm gonna give it a five stars out of five because I think it's a fantastic tool and I think the price is reasonable for what you get. So that concludes this review and overall, we're somewhere between four and a half stars and five stars as an overall rating for this tool. I'm very happy with it. Who is it for? It's for professionals. This is a professional grade tool, I can tell you that. I think it's gonna be fantastic if you want a cordless track saw and you're already using Milwaukee M18 batteries, this is gonna be a great option for you. If you're like me and you're already uh, using the uh, Festool cordless track saw and you've already got all your stuff purchased, is it going to be worth paying the money to switch over? Are there that massive of improvements on this saw? Probably not other than the fact that you would be able to maybe match up your batteries um, with this saw where you don't have to carry an additional charger that you don't use for anything else. Um, that's the biggest value for me with this saw. But, you know, so different people, it's going to hit differently depending on where you're at uh, in your tool arsenal. But I think it's going to be a great value for anyone that's already got some Milwaukee batteries just a great addition, and you're gonna be able to do so many more things with a track saw. I remember whenever I first got a track saw, it was like a whole new world of abilities opened up to me. I could do so many things more efficiently that I hadn't done before. So I love that Milwaukee has got their own track saw out on the market now for professional carpenters and remodelers. That's the target audience they were aiming for. I think they did a great job and it's been worth the wait. They had a lot of time to look at other tool companies, what they did right and what they did wrong, and they really brought that all together in this saw. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'm tired of talking. I feel like I put a lot of work into this review. I really thought it through and tried to really hit on all of the key features. So I hope you found value in it, and I hope that it helps you make a purchase decision on whether or not to purchase this saw. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.